Hello everyone, I'm so excited because today we are starting a brand new mini-series on David. We have entitled it After God's Heart because that's the way God referred to David. You know, um, as a matter of fact, he had told already King Saul, who was king at the time, that he had chosen for himself another person after his own heart. And I read that to you in 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14. But now your kingdom shall not endure, says God to Saul. The Lord has sought out for himself a man after his own heart. And the Lord has appointed him as a ruler over his people. So God even told Saul that he had chosen a different person, a man after his own heart. We're going to follow a little book that I wrote on this, uh, entitled the same way, uh, After God's Heart. And the subtitle is A Study in Brokenness from the life of David, because David had to go through all kinds of things to become a man after God's own heart. And on the cover, there's Jesus and a child. You can get this book uh, on Amazon Kindle, anywhere in the world. So if you want to follow our study with a little booklet, we're going to do 10 of the 12 chapters of this book. So let's start from the beginning. David is known, of course, as the king who united the nation and is, is, is the king, the ideal king who received God's covenant. And uh, Jesus was a descendant of David. That's why he was called son of David in the New Testament. But we start from the beginning when he's not known, when he's not famous, when he's just a little boy. And so when we start the story of David is in chapter 16 of 1 Samuel. It's interesting because no one else will be called David in the whole Bible. He was such a special man that he was not only David, but David after God's own heart. So let's get started. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul? Because, you know, God had rejected Saul as a king because he kept doing his own thing without, you know, following God. Since I have rejected him from being king over Israel, fill your horn with oil. And here I have a horn. They used to put the oil inside the horn to anoint people for different special things. For example, becoming king. And so fill your horn with oil and go. I will send you to, the Jes- to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have selected a king for myself among his sons. So when I talk about Bethlehem, I think it's amazing the fact that David was a shepherd in the same shepherd's fields that the shepherds were at when the angels came to announce Jesus' birth a thousand years later. It's the same area because, of course, that became the city of David because David lived there. And a thousand years later, Jesus would be born in the same Bethlehem. And we got to go to the shepherd's fields. And uh, if you uh, see this video, you see all the, the hills where the shepherds were in times of Jesus. But of course, David was there too a thousand years earlier. I, I, I love that fact. And when uh, Samuel got to Bethlehem, seven of Jesse's sons came and they started to go in front of Samuel. And Samuel got confused. It's interesting for me that even the prophet thought, thought wow, the, these sons look really regal. They must be the ones anointed. And so we start on verse 6 of 1 Samuel 16, verse 6. When they entered, he looked at Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But God said, no, that's not the way it works. He said, the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at the height of his stature because I have rejected him for God sees not as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. I have a heart here that says after God's heart. God would mold David after his own heart. He saw the heart of David and he said, I want this young man as the king of Israel. He looked at the heart and he gave a lesson to his own prophet Samuel. The Lord does not see as a man sees. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Well, the prophet said, okay, the second son then, Abinadab, verse 8. The Lord says, that's not the one either. Verse 9, Shama, the third one, that's not the one either. And all seven sons, says verse 10, passed before Samuel. 
and none of them are the anointed of the Lord, the one that God wanted for king. And verse 11, Samuel said to Jesse, are these all the children? And he says, there remains the youngest. He's tending the sheep, kind of saying, well, he's not that important. Then Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him for we will not sit down until he comes here. I love the the stubbornness of of Samuel. We are not going to sit down until he comes here. You know, shepherds were not held in high esteem in the times of the Bible. They were supposed to be, you know, the least in the family, the least in society. But God had bypassed all the other seven sons who looked regal. And even the prophet thought they looked like kings. And he had seen the heart of a shepherd, David, a man after his own heart. You know, if you have been ostracized or marginalized or told that you're not worth much, I hope you know that that's not the way God feels about you. God sees different. He sees your heart and he calls those um, people that have humble hearts. And as a matter of fact, um, it's not a surprise that God would choose David because he had chosen, you know who, who David's grandfather was? The son of Ruth, who had been a Moabite, who came to Bethlehem and married Boaz. And they had a son named Ovid, who was the father of Jesse, who was the father of David. So God has been known to use people that are not likely to be chosen. Um, and so I hope this brings you, brings you encouragement. If somebody has told you, you will never amount to to anything. So here, um, David arrives, verse 12. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and beautiful eyes and a handsome appearance. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him for this is he. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Perhaps you too want to choose today to be a person after God's own heart. You know, David would become uh, a shepherd of God's people. He would be the shepherd king. And he depend, he depended on God as, as a sheep depends on a shepherd. He was broken and we're going to study all of this. That's why this is a study in brokenness. He was enrolled in God's school of brokenness. And um, God saw his heart and called him for something very special. And you too are called by God because he's looking at your heart. And you might say, well, what does God's heart look like? Well, God's heart was shown at the cross because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. I have a phrase here in page 15 of our little booklet that says, he chooses the reject, the underdog, the little one, the least and the last. He makes me feel loved and accepted with all my imperfections. God is in the business of choosing the unlikely ones. Woohoo! At the cross, he chose all of us. And I hope today you're going to choose to become a person after God's own heart. And when you want to know what that looks like, Look at the cross. That's God's heart. 